Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Fergal Armstrong and welcome to Cracking Addiction. And we have with us Dr. Laura Petrocek. So Laura, today we're going to talk about the eighth step. What is the eighth step? The eighth step is made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Right. Now, when I first read for the first time the eighth step, I shuddered almost as much as I shuddered when I read the fourth step, which was making the inventory. It's very challenging, isn't it? How, you know, what are you thinking? How did it, you know, how was it for you? It is really challenging. I mean, the fourth step, you know, it's, it's terrifying to look at the wreckage of our past, mm. my past and what my mm. addiction uh, caused. And, and then the eighth step, is scary you have to do in the it all sense. Over again. Well, you're not necessarily doing it all over again, but you're taking actions to repair the damage done, and that to me is even more challenging because you don't know how you're going to be received if it mm-hmm. includes people, which it usually does. Mm-hmm. I mean, it can uh, it be in regards to institutions or. Um, you know, somebody, something else, but usually it's people that yeah. we need to make amends to. Yeah. So making the list, it's it's it's, it's almost the same as making a, an inventory, isn't it? Well, again, it's it's one step on this adventure, one step beyond making, uh, looking at our um, character default, as someone recently called it. Um, instead of defects of character, because the A step is, you know, now we're trying to address the shame from all those uh, shortcomings or all those um, actions that cause harm to other people. It's more of a social type of step, whereas the fourth step is more individual. It's us making a list, and the A step is more of a social step in that we're uh, addressing people who we have made harm to, where we have caused harm. How long does that take? Uh, (laughs) It takes a long time. I mean, one thing about this step is initially my first eight step, you know, had to do with the damage my drinking and uh, drugging had caused. But then the subsequent eight steps now you're clean and sober and now it's clean and sober. So to me, it's been harder down the road because I don't have alcohol or drugs to hide behind the wreckage that I've caused. You know, it's um, my own moral failing. So it's not, it's for me more challenging to look at. And also the other aspect for me is having bipolar disorder, having to look at, uh, the wreckage that that has caused, even though I'm clean and sober, and to make amends in that regard. Right, right. So there's a lot of there's a lot of self reflection in there, and, and you know I would suggest that for some people there's a lot of self flagellation. But you know we can have a discussion about what the difference is between self reflection and self flagellation, perhaps in another day. But it does require sitting down and thinking about. Uh, you know, what happened then? What did I do then? Who did I hurt then? So there's a lot of sitting down and just thinking, isn't there? Yes, there's a lot of reflection. And I mean, we don't have to wait for another podcast to talk about self-flagellation. People do tend to beat up on themselves. It's the step almost lends itself to that, but it's not meant for that. It's meant to uh, making a list of all persons you would harm and becoming willing. It doesn't mean you're actually going to, that's the ninth step. The ninth step is yeah. making amends. This step is yeah. about being willing. And mm, because yeah. that is a um, stance that's necessary before we could actually make amends. We have to be willing, mm. um, but it's, it's not an easy step. Why do, why do they get stuck? Because they jump ahead. They're like, Oh no, I make a list and then I have to become willing. And oh no, I don't know if I want to face my ex-boss 
because then I'm going to pay thousands of dollars. Or I don't know if I want to face my spouse or child because, you know, they may hate me even more than they do, or maybe they won't forgive me. And then what am I going to do? So people future trip a lot on this step. And then that stops them from just taking it one part at a time. And the first part I've just heard over the years, and what I've said to my own sponsees is you're only making a list. That's it. Don't go to the next part yet, because that's going to trip you up. Just make the mm. list. And that helps a lot of people, you know, not to mm. future trip of what this amends is going to look like or how am I, how's it all going to play out? Yeah, that's a good piece of uh, advice, isn't it? You're just making a list. You're just writing something on a piece of paper. Well, you're not just writing something on a piece of paper. You're writing, you're writing names. You know, a lot of times people float these names in their head of who they've harmed. And they're like, Laura, well, I'd have to write that down. I already have the list in my head. I'm like, well, here's the difference. When you put pen to paper and write those names down, it becomes more real, um, yeah. the harm that you've caused. And it also mm. uh, is it points to what the next step is going to be or the next part of it, the next section of the step, which is becoming willing. And it makes it more real when it's in your head. You're like, Oh yeah, I think I hurt that person or, Oh yeah, I messed up on that job. But when you write it down, it's irrefutable evidence. It's like, okay, there it is black and white. Mm -hmm. I can't get around this. I can't rationalize, make excuses. This is who it is. Mm -hmm. And you know, I have to face it, even though I don't really want to. Yeah. And this is in the context of the seventh step, which is, of course, where you've, on a daily basis, asked God to remove your defects of character. So, you know, is, is failure to actually progress onto the eighth step a defect of character, do you think? Well, it's interesting you say that because there's um, a phrase in the rooms called delay is dangerous. So delaying making this list, becoming willing, why it's dangerous is because some people have relapsed behind not making amends and carrying all this, you know, shame and regret in their head, self-flagellation. And then what do they do? Well, they're going to pick up a drink and that's not going to help anybody or it's not definitely not going to mm. help themselves. So that's why... Delay is dangerous, and it's important to, you know, continue with the courage you've used for the first seven steps, now for the eighth step. Now, in in the fourth and fifth step, you know, we have our sponsor, don't we? Yes. You do have your sponsor helping you or your therapist. Who have you got? Or your therapist, yeah. Who have you got helping you in the eighth step? You have your sponsor, and they'll usually say, over and over, make a list. Well, I don't know. I don't really want to. This person's going to be so mad. They're already so mad. Or I know that some things that have been suggested to you and that I've suggested to sponsees is put the names on the list that you're more comfortable making amends to and the people that uh, or places that are really, you know, that you don't want to make amends or you feel it's going to be a very complicated situation. Put those names at the bottom of the list, the, the more difficult amends, but the amends that seem that they'll be easier, put those on the top and then it helps you go through, make that list. It makes it a little easier. Right. Yeah. Little steps first. Yeah. Go for the easy wins first. Yeah. Yeah. Go for the easy ones first. Right. Although, right. you know, you don't necessarily know. You may think yeah. it's an easy win. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And then when you hear feedback from the other person, you're like, oh, man. OK. Um, <laughs> yeah. I had went. To, uh, I don't know. Well, I had uh, made an amends once to one of my professors and. And then he proceeded to, uh, you know, name many other of my shortcomings. So, and I thought that was going to be an easy one. So I was like, no, I really misjudged that one. So you don't really know um, how the person's going to respond. Most mm. people are uh, welcoming, but some people but we are haven't, still We haven't done that yet, have we? That, 
Yeah, that's, just that's, the list. that's the next step. Yeah, that's your thank <laughs> that, you. That's I'm the next step. That. See, I'm doing yeah, exactly yeah. what you're not supposed to do <laughs> and what stops you from making the list. Yeah. Just yeah, make the yeah. list. I don't know. How are they going to react? Just make the list. Yeah, but what if they get more pissed up? Just make the list. Ah, uh, uh, make the list. You just say it like a broken record. Okay, so let's let's talk. Let's talk about some of the practicalities here, right? You're writing something on a piece of paper that is so deeply personal and private. You know, what if it gets out? What if it? What if? You know, what 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 kind of what kind of issues are there around privacy and, and respect? Well, the privacy would be between you and your sponsor um, initially. I mean, the nice step is when you go out and make amends. That's a different story, as we've said, or a different step. But um, but hopefully your sponsor will keep your confidentiality just as a therapist is, although a sponsor mm-hmm. isn't bound by the same law and ethics a therapist is. But mm-hmm. uh, they kind of is found to that, aspire to that. Um, so it's important to let the person know, look, I'm not going to tell anybody, um, mm. you know. Because this is the first time that you're talking about other people. Yeah. Right. Until now, it's all been about. about him, you're talking about how you, your actions affected yes. other people. That yeah. is not an easy pill to swallow. Yeah. So this is the first time that you're talking about other people. Everything else has all been an internal reflection between you and the sponsor and God and, and having to improve yourself and going on a journey of personal growth. But this is really this is really the first time when your sponsor could really breach a, a kind of a, a relationship of trust and privacy there. So it's a really important uh, decision to make to actually choose the sponsor. Yes. Um, It doesn't happen. I think it happens rarely. I mean, I've been clean and sober for years, and I haven't heard that happen too often. The time, the times that I have heard it, that that um, uh, confidentiality being broken is if, unfortunately, your sponsor goes out and drinks again, and then maybe they say things they shouldn't say Mm -hmm. or share things they shouldn't say. But otherwise. I think it's a rare occurrence, like let's say 1%, if even that, you know. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's still an issue to think about. Yeah, it's an issue to think about. Still, but I think, or, I think what gets in people's way is a lot. It's not so much not trusting the sponsor to keep your confidence, but it's having the courage and willingness to yeah. actually write these names down and face your, you know, the havoc that you've left behind. It's it's not easy to face that or face those people. Mm. So let's say you've done the list, right? I mean, how, how impactful is this step on, on recovery when you've actually got this piece of paper with your, your penciled lines and a list of names and you know, what, what, is, is it is it in and of, of itself? Do you get a sense of closure when you've done the list or is it then simply the gateway to further, um, further, further angst regarding the next step? So one thing about doing this step is that once you become willing to let go of the resentments, uh, to make amends, to let go of blame and self-pity, you know, you recognize that we're all just ordinary garden variety human beings. And for a lot of people, that's a welcome relief instead of feeling like, you know, the worst person in the world or sometimes the best person in the world, but it helps let go of that self-loathing and beating up on yourself. All right. So it is actually, it it is actually a part of a process of healing. You know, it's, it's, has to be seen in that context, doesn't it? Right. Because before you could rebuild relationships, you need to identify the relationships you've damaged. You have to work yeah. on those first before yeah. you could rebuild relationships. Right, right. 
Okay, so what what message of hope would you give to someone contemplating an eighth step list? Well, the message I would give is um, put your name on that list first. Put your name on the top, you know, mm. because in a way, by putting my name on the top of the list, even though it's interesting, they do not have this in the literature, but this has become more commonplace throughout the years because this there were so many barriers for people making this list and understandably so. So someone finally said, put your name on the top of that list, you know, because the person you need to make amends to first is yourself. And then by making amends to yourself, you could um, hopefully stop the process of being irresponsible and self-destructive, you know, continuing those behaviors so I think the first message of hope is you're going to feel better about you because you're first going to make amends to yourself. And then it might fall a little bit easier to make a list of persons you have harmed and move forward from there. And you're going to feel better. You're going to feel better about yourself. You're not going to feel like such a piece of, you know, you're just not going to feel all that self-loathing. All right, Laura. Well, look, thanks very much for your wisdom today. Um, hopefully we can speak again very soon about the, the next step. Thank you, Fergal, and thank you for having me on your show. That's all for today, folks. My name is Dr. Fergal Armstrong, and this has been Cracking Addiction.